Hey guys, what's up? This is Benjamin Hall, and I'm coming to you from my studio, Dream Loud Studio, here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I wanted to make a video today, basically show you, showing you what I did to get my snare drum sound on the last Nail the Mix, which was The Contortionist. The song was Return to Earth off of their latest album. And uh, you guys might know or you might not know, but I came in second place on the top 20 poll uh, this past month on that song, which I was super stoked about. Uh, I came in second place to a great mixer, uh, name of which is Matisse Clavinius. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Forgive me, Matisse, if I'm pronouncing it wrong. But man, he made a killer mix and deserved 100% to get first place. So congrats to you, man. So I'm the first loser. <laughs> but um, I was chatting on Facebook Messenger with Matisse a couple nights ago. And he was asking me what I did to get my snare drum sound. And I thought instead of just telling him over text message that I would just make a video and um, release it for anybody else that would be curious or would want to hear. So, you know, this is just a way to give back to you guys and, and help you guys out, maybe give you some ideas uh, for next month's mix. So here we go. Um, I record in Presona Studio One. Uh, it's pretty much the DAW I've used since getting into recording. I'm really comfortable with it, so... Maybe one day I'll pick up a different one, but for right now, uh, I love it. It sounds really great, and why change if you don't have any issues with it? So um, what I'm going to do out of respect for um, the Neil the Mix community and for us giving us access to these professional files is I'm not going to show you the whole song. Um, all the stems from the song because we really don't have permission to show those remixes so all I'm going to do is show you my drum mix for context and then this the snare drum sound uh, so I really appreciate what Neil the Mix has done giving us access to this great edu educational resource and the last thing I want to do would be ruin that for everybody else by uh, breaching the guidelines that they've given us so that's why I'm only going to show you the drum sounds. So let's dive right in and take a listen to just the overall drum sound in the chorus. Cool. So that's the snare drum sound I have in the chorus and uh, or the full drum sound, and here's the snare. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to dive in, uh, take off all of these plugins, and show you what the raw track sounds like. Okay, we're soloing the snare bus. Okay, so here's the snare top and the snare bottom mic. And the first thing you might notice is I've got this gain plugin on. And basically what I do is, uh, I think Nolly showed us this way back in, I think this was maybe September's, October's, Nail the Mix of last year. And he likes to use the gain plugin in Logic uh, and puts them on all his tracks. So basically, he adjusts the gain using that instead of the faders. And I prefer to start that way too. Um, start from a fader zero position. It just gets less confusing if you're using a lot of automation. You know where your mix balance point is. So uh, that's the reason why I have that mix tool plugin, which is a gain plugin on every single track. Uh, the other reason is it also has a nice handy invert phase feature. And if you didn't realize this about um, the snare tracks for the contortionist nail the mix, it might be why you were having a really hard time getting the low end to come out in your snare drum because those top and bottom mics are out of phase, so you have to flip the phase on one of them. So let's take a listen. Let's take a listen to the top and bottom mic together 
with that phase invert tool off. Okay, now I'm gonna click that on for the bottom mic. To hear how you lose all of that low end whenever the phase invert is off. And when I actually started mixing this month, I forgot to check the phase on the snare and I was adding so much low end to my snare and I could not get the low end to come out. And that's what gave me the clue. Oh, maybe I should check the phase. And that was the issue. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Um, you should definitely check that on uh, any track that you get in that's mic'd with multiple mics. So, all right, let's move on. I funnel... I funnel all of my drums into a drum bus and my snare goes into a snare bus. So that's where I have all my plugins. Um, as you can hear from that snare drum track, there's a lot of high end bleeding in to that top mic. So I decided to add a gate first and this is just the gate that comes with Studio One. It's the stock plugin. So let's take a listen to that with it on. Now the settings I choose here are the fastest attack possible. Um, my release and hold times, I picked as 80 milliseconds and 40. Uh, I will start in that range, but I'll just adjust them to taste, depending on what sounds the best to me. So the second thing I have on here is a stock EQ plugin from uh, Studio One. So you can hear that I'm adding some low end here. I've got a, let's see what's going on here. I'm trying to figure out which one that was. Okay, I've got a 3 dB boost. I have these mixed up backwards. Sorry, that's why I wasn't able to figure out where I was boosting. A uh, 3 dB boost at 204 hertz. Um, there was a really annoying whistling frequency around 260, so. Yeah, I got rid of that really quick. And that's what these other cuts are for. There are other similar things. And then you'll see this boost way up here to get some more crack. And then obviously we have a, a high pass filter to get rid of any unnecessary low end. So that's A, B that. That's bypassed. This is with it on. Okay, so the next plugin uh, I'm using is I love this by Waves. It's the CLA 1176 plugin. Um, it's a great compressor. I use it on a ton of tracks. I think I used it, I normally use it on my kick too, but I use the new Distressor plugin by Slate this month. Um, so uh, a pretty high ratio here. Um, 12 to 1. I normally use the 8 to 1, but this month I decided 12 sounded really good. So let's take a listen with that on. And my goal here is I want extra punch out of the drum and also a little bit more length to that snare. And the length is what I'm doing with this release control. That's why I don't have it on the fastest release setting, which would be 7. And I adjust that to taste. I really recommend, if you guys haven't checked this out yet, either get Nail the Mix Enhanced or buy the hearing compression uh, module that Joel Wanasek does. It is amazing. He is so good at teaching how to hear compression. If you guys haven't done that, it will totally open your ears and mind to understanding how to use compression in a way that's more than just controlling dynamics, but is musical and able to help create a groove and change the groove of not only your drums but bass guitar vocals so i really recommend that it's really opened my mind to hearing compression um, i have the attack on a little bit less than half setting so that all of that punch gets through all right next plug in this is one i would consider this a little bit of a secret weapon that i use to this is the Kramer tape plugin by Waves, and it's just a tape, analog tape simulator. The way I like to use it is to add saturation to my snare drum if I feel like it could use a little bit more sizzle from the snare wires. So uh, 
basically this record level is like an input and the playback level is the output. So I have that on basically very barely. So it's kind of like a mix control. You can link the two and move them however you want. Um, but hold on one second. Sorry about that. So I had it on right about there. Okay. So this is basically affecting 10% of the signal. It's not very really doing too much, but it's adding a little bit of sizzle to that snare wire high end. The other thing that this plugin will do, if you add a lot of it, it will really kill your transients. So um, I'm very subtle about using this. All right, so uh, a series of three plugins I use next. Um, and these ones are from the Slate Everything Bundle. Um, I subscribe to that so you get basically every plugin that Slate's ever made available to you for a low monthly price. Uh, I love them. I really recommend them. They sound great. Uh, the first plugin I use is their SSL style plugin, um, EQ. And so you can see I'm adding at above 7.5 kilohertz, a little bit of sizzle, two, two, decibel, uh, two decibels, uh, a little bit more crack, so around 3.32 kilohertz. I'm adding another 2.5 decibels to that. A little bit of a low mid cut around 260. And if you remember from my other stock EQ, that's where that really annoying um, frequency was. So I'm just cutting a little bit more uh, 1.4 decibel cut. And then, very last, uh, I set this to bell mode. Um, and this is 203 hertz. I added a whole 5 decibel of low end. So let's take a listen with that on. Yeah, just to really get that punch out of the low end of the snare. Uh, this is a really cool plugin. It's basically a harmonic saturator, and the shimmer is the high end, thickness is the low end. So let's take a listen with that on. Just adds uh, the thickness adds a little bit more punch to the low end, and that sizzle just makes that high end crack. And then the trimmer plugin, I added another decibel of gain. I think probably to make up for uh, the Kramer tape, uh, which is padding uh, the transient a little bit. All right, the very last plugin I had on here, which I've never done this before, but I put the L3 limiter on my snare. And the reason I did this was because I felt like some of the hits weren't consistent at some parts and that snare was just poking through a little bit more than in other parts. So the way that I set this up is so it barely catches those hits that are louder than that average volume that I want. And it's I'm trying my best to not affect the tone of the drum but just tame anything that might be a little bit too loud and, and poke out and be annoying. So cool. Um, now, since I put that gate on, I really needed a lot more, I guess, reverb to make up for that length of the snare that I'm cutting out with the gate. So I used another plugin that you get with the Slate Everything bundle. It's my snare, uh, snare reverb, which I use the Verb Suite Classics. Uh, I started with their preset um, wide snare plate, and I might have done a, a little bit of adjusting to all of these, but basically the way this is set up is this is an FX send, and I'm just sending uh, the signal to this um, snare reverb, and then I can mix it in based on how much I think it needs in the mix, and I'll just do it to taste. I felt like it sounded really good there, so awesome. I also have a drum reverb on too. Uh, I'll go through my drum bus really quickly because that is affecting the sound of the snare. 
So once again, I've got this CLA 76 plugin on my drum bus, uh, but I have the settings a little bit different. Only a four to one ratio. The release is a lot faster and the attack a lot faster. So I'm using this to, this is more to average out all of the hits. I guess work as a bus glue type of thing. Um, I have the SSL style EQ on the whole drum bus again, and just a little bit more high end and low end, but the biggest move I'm doing is a three decibel cut at 462, uh, just to get rid of some of that mid-range, ugly mid-range in their boxiness. And I have another drum reverb. I have that on a lot more subtly. Let's take a look at that though. Uh, so I'm using the warm drum space and once again, very subtle. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention. So on my snare reverb, let me solo the verb real quick to show you that. So I actually EQ'd my reverb because I felt like it was a little bit boxy and I wanted to get rid of that. Sweet. So there you go. Um, yeah, and that's what I did to get my snare sound. Um, one more very important thing that I want to show you is, so there were ghost notes in this song, and the one problem with gating a snare is that those ghost notes are never going to come out. Um, but the way that I got them to come out in this situation is I automated my threshold and we can see that if I go to that gate here I'll go I'll go a little bit before this and you can see um, I have the gate set to open at negative 23 decibels on every other part of the song and then whenever we hit this ghost note part basically the threshold open. I have it come a lot farther down to allow those ghost notes to come through. Uh, it's really hard to hear in the mix in general, but it, it, those ghost notes do add a feel and you don't want to cut them out um, because especially with a drummer this good, it adds so much groove to the song. So that's done with automation. Um, and let's take one more listen to the full drum mix. Uh, one more plugin I see. I forgot to talk about this. So this is JST, um, the JST Clip plugin, and basically what it does, is it kind of works like a distortion. It just chops off all your peaks, and it, it's a way to clip through a plugin instead of clipping in your actual DAW. And uh, it works really great. It really helps the drums cut through. So I just have it mixed in. Not that much, like 52% or so. It's just a little bit a little bit extra there to help cut through the rest of the mix. It's a really busy mix. There's a lot going on. So, guys, I hope this was really helpful. I know I can be long-winded, um, but that's how I got my snare sound on Nail the Mix. Uh, I want to just really quickly encourage you guys to. Um, I've been a part of Nail the Mix for, it's been about a year now really close to a year and the very first month um the very first month that I joined it was the month after periphery I forget the name uh, it was state champs uh right back at it again and I had no idea what I was doing mixing um I had I'd been mixing for maybe a year or two uh really putting a lot of time into it but I I had no idea what I was doing I was just going along by what I learned and I just happened to do really well on that mix and I got in the top 20 that first month and I was super stoked uh, but then I went on a super big long drought where I had not been back in the top 20 until this past month when I got second so uh, just in saying that guys like um, it was kind of a blow to my ego to make it the first month and then not be back <laughs> for another 10 months after that. And I just want to encourage you guys that, um, 
you know, don't don't give up uh, if you have some setbacks. You know, even even me winning this month, uh, I was kind of surprised, and I just mixed it like I would for a client, and I got to the point where I thought, you know, there's any other time that I'm spending on this mix is just wasting time, and it's not adding anything better. I think I did seven revisions, so I got my I got my base mix done, uh, my balances all figured out, and then I just kept going and referencing them in different speakers out in my car and my headphones earbuds and I would just listen for anything that sounded annoying to me and then I'd go back in and make very tiny adjustments I wasn't doing anything drastic so uh and I just did the best I could but I tried to mix quickly and not overthink anything and you know uh I just happened to submit and be really lucky this month and win so it's great to win, but, um, you know, just keep at it every day. And I know you guys can get there too. So, um, I hope this has been encouraging to you all. I hope you learned something. Please leave a comment and, um, you know, rocket guys nail that mix.